of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to go ahead and pray here real quick. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to be here today, Lord. Lord, it, uh, hearts are heavy today and uh, just a different feeling about what uh, has happened to our brother Dan. But Lord, I just pray to guide our hearts today. And Lord, we know everything is in uh, your timing. And uh, sometimes we don't understand. I think it's okay. We don't understand. But uh, we will in time. But Lord, just uh, continue to uh, guide our hearts today, Lord. Salvation is still a possibility here to someone who doesn't know you. And that's our main goal today for those who may be here today or those that could be listening. So just again, Lord, I pray to guide our hearts. You do every day. And uh, sometimes we tend, tend to go the wrong direction. But I'm just grateful, Lord, that you're there. And Lord, that you're uh, rooting us on for... Uh, um, success to the Father. And dear Father, Lord, just thank you for giving your son that he shed his blood for our lives on, on the cross. So, God hurts today, I pray, Lord. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Page number 576, if you need this, I'm just going to uh, start seeing the Star Spangled Banner. So... Page 569, church, if you need that. Battle Hymn of the Republic. Let's do verses 1 and 3 here. Page 569. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the Page 571, if you would, my country, tis of thee. New verses 1 and 4 here today. 571. <clears throat>
Thank you, church. Please be seated. Pastor. All right. Thank you, Brother Dan, and uh, good to see you this morning. And uh, praise the Lord, my voice is a little bit better, but not quite up to uh, 100%. I'm um, still uh, kind of coughing a little bit. Uh, the good news, I gave it to my wife. <laughs> yeah, she's, uh, yeah, I'm having a hard time too with it, and uh, pray for her. I um, hate that, but uh, that's sometimes what happens when you live in the same household, amen? I mean, she made me sleep out in the garage for three or four days, but... <laughs> She still got it. I, anyhow, well, uh, we welcome, and uh, again, this is a great time for our nation as we think about the uh, the Fourth of July and uh, celebrate our nation. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, in the shape and the condition our nation uh, sometimes looks, I'm thankful that I'm still a part of the United States of America. And I'm thankful for those who have uh, been a part uh, in our history uh, in making all of this possible, that we can stand here today in freedom and uh, express ourselves in the things of God and uh, continue to uh, live our lives the way that we have uh, had the privilege to do that. And so this morning, uh, as we're thinking about that, if you've served in our uh, military or currently serving, uh, would you just stand all across our room this morning? <clears throat> Those of you that have served, would you give them a hand? And uh, well, I'm thankful. Thank you. you. May be seated. You know, I'm just thankful again for uh, for those elements of, uh, you know, people's lives that uh, have been so graciously, uh, again, given. Uh, many who have lost their lives and uh, dedicating to this great nation and uh, the freedom that we have. Uh, I'm grateful that God has allowed us to have the freedom that we have. And so uh, may the Lord bless our nation and, and uh, pray for our, our continuation and pray that God's hand would be on the midst. But it's a great time of year and a great reminder to us uh, that we can do that. So I uh, thank you and those who have stood today in the recognition of that. I want to remind uh, you of just a few things very quickly, if I might, and uh, share with you uh, some uh, uh, things about uh, the uh, events that are happening here at the church. Uh, we are, uh, in the month of July, um, raising um, products, or may I say, uh, asking for donations for back to school, and uh, I know the kids hate that word, right? Um, and it's hard to think about, but, uh, you know, June is over, July is here, and so through the month of July, uh, we'll collect items for uh, back to school, and uh, we'll ask you to uh, bring those in. Uh, many of you know the, most of the list that's there, but uh, we'll have a list that uh, will be put out there eventually at the welcome desk, and you'll be able to pick that up and uh, have some idea to that. And so just bring those supplies in. Uh, first of August, we'll try to distribute those to the families as uh, you know, school, they keep bumping it up every year, earlier and earlier and earlier. And uh, so be mindful of that, if you would, please, and uh, uh, bring those in. And it's such a help to our <clears throat> uh, fam families in regards to that, all right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And so uh, be mindful of that, if you would. July 11th, we'll have a seniors covered dish here uh, at the church. And uh, so uh, do uh, be mindful of that as well. And then the end of the month, all right, uh, VBS is, uh, man, such a tremendous uh, event for our church in the month of July. The last full week, I believe the first of it is the 24th on Monday. And uh, we'll start with VBS uh, through that time. And so uh, be mindful of that and be praying for it. And so this morning, um, following the morning service, if you uh, are working in VBS, uh, if Diana uh, has contacted you and you have a part in VBS, teaching, helpers, whatever may be the case, if you will meet with me uh, following the service this morning, all right? Uh, we'll meet back in the fellowship hall and uh, fellowship together with that just for a few moments. I'll explain a little bit about that and a little bit about what's going on, all right? 
So back in the fellowship hall uh, following the service uh, in VBS, okay? So uh, be mindful of that if you would please and uh, we'll uh, direct our thoughts and um, allow you to uh, uh, hear a little bit about what we're looking and anticipating on doing for this uh, VBS coming, okay? So very vital uh, and uh, hope you'll just take a few moments to, to be back there and uh, be a part of that, okay? Well, it is the month of July and uh, before we proceed any farther along, uh, we like to recognize just a few moments of anniversaries, birthdays. So if you're having an anniversary in the month of July, um, just raise your hand real quick and we're going to recognize you, all right? Yes, Gary and Sherry. Eighteen years. All right. Give Gary and Sherry a hand right there. Happy anniversary to you. <clears throat> All right. Anybody else celebrating an anniversary? Month of July. All right. Lori and Brian. Thirty years. All right. Very good. Lori and Brian Roar. Okay. That's great. Michael, why is she yanking your hand down? You forgot when you got married? Oh, well, all right, so we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. We'll back it. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Do you know what month it was and what year? No. How many years? I know, but, you know. <laughs> I was there for mine, too, but, you know. <laughs> Seven years. All right. Give them a hand if you would. All right, McGee's right back there. 53 years tomorrow, amen. Very good. All right, Nathan, Morgan, how many? Three years, that's good, all right, that's good. Amen. Nathan and Morgan, all right, anybody else? Okay, Sonia, oh, how many? Seven years, all right. Sonny's over this way. All right, Steve. Okay, very good. Seven years. Anybody else celebrating? Don't want to miss anybody. All right, who's had a uh, birthday or going to have a birthday? Let me say it that way. Uh, we just try to do the whole month now. So if you're having a birthday through this month, then put your hand up. Anybody? All right, man, a whole bunch of you back there. All right, John, go ahead first. 80 on the 28th. All right. Give John a hand. All right. Go ahead, Mike. Who is it? Danielle. Oh, you're speaking for somebody else now. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Who else had their hand up over here? Somebody else? Yes, go ahead. 79 on the 19th. All right. Somebody else up here. Yep. Go ahead. 39. How's that possible, Cassie? Man, 39. Give her a hand if you would, all right? Anybody else? Yes. On the 20th, you'll be what? Yeah. We do. All right. God bless. That's great. Anybody else? Russ, pa Patty, and Pat, Patty's going to be 6'5". All right. We're twins. Yeah, for a few days. <clears throat> right. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? Michael? 19 in three days. All right. Michael up there. Steve? 55 tomorrow. Okay. All right. Wow, we got a lot of birthdays. Good month. Randy. 71, Randy. All right, right there. Yep. Jeff. 64, all right. Give him a hand. Who else? Having a birthday. Noel. Man, my granddaughter back there, Noel. 19. I'll give her a hand if you would. <clears throat> I saw that on my calendar yesterday, and I'm thinking, how in the world can that be? 19, all right. Anybody else? 
I, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> Patty? 65. 65, all right, give Patty a hand. <clears throat> all right, anybody else? Randy? 69, give Randy a hand back there. Man, a lot of good birthdays in this month, amen. Yeah, I'm going to have a birthday on uh, 17th, and uh, I'll be uh, 66 this year. That's hard to believe. <clears throat> All right. Anybody else? Carl. Okay, Carl. 75 on the 28th. All right. Man. Anybody else? Don't want to miss anybody. All right. Man, that's a lot of birthdays, isn't it? Praise the Lord. A lot of good uh, July birthdays. So, ushers, would you come? Let's receive our morning offering. Thank you for uh, being patient uh, with that. And I uh, always like to just take a few moments uh, to recognize it. You know, it's, it's kind of odd because people don't really want their birthday numbers recognized, but they always like to have their birthdays recognized. And uh, so, anyhow, praise the Lord. Father, thank you for the day. We thank you, God, for your blessings. Now, Lord, would you uh, direct our thoughts as we, uh, again, uh, lead in the rest of the service ahead. Thank you for our nation, again, as we recognize uh, the uh, day as we uh, celebrate. And uh, God, also, uh, we wouldn't be uh, who we are without you. Uh, Lord, our nation recognizing you. And, oh, God, how we uh, do uh, need that uh, back in our uh, society. Uh, God, I do uh, give thanks for what you have done. And then, Lord, for the offering, we uh, thank you for that as well. And we pray your blessings be added in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Thank you for your giving.
so glad we have that presence of our Father. Stand with me if you would, church, page 572. We're our last congregation this morning. 572. Let's do verses 1, 3, and 4. America the Beautiful. church. Please be seated. Well, Jan is going to come in just a moment and uh, sing for us. And again, um, I want to say a, a great thank you to those of you that uh, helped um, with the Thailand project. Um, God really blessed and uh, we're so grateful and thank you for your uh, giving in regards to that if you uh, participated with us. And then uh, I want to say a special thanks to all of you again who've had a part in our camp um, ministry this year for our kids that went. Uh, we had a great uh, teen week this past week and uh, you know they came back again excited and uh, what the Lord was doing uh, in the midst of that and uh, the kids that have already uh, been to camp and uh, have gone uh, just pray that uh, you know that uh, fire just keeps burning in them and uh, God just keeps doing amazing things but I thank you for again your participation in that and uh, we'll uh, have a little bit of a time where we'll have them uh, perhaps share a little bit about um, what uh, they experienced through camp and so uh, we're grateful for those who again participated with us. Penny Dixon is a lady that uh, sits right here in the front. Uh, she had surgery this past week and pray for her. She's recovering from that. <clears throat> Continue to pray for Debbie Walls and her recovery um, as she is uh, still uh, trying to uh, work through that. Uh, the Bissells again are, uh, went south uh, there for their son-in-law. Uh, he is uh, very near passing, so do lift that up if you would. Uh, Mrs. Walden, uh, keep her in prayer. Uh, she is at Pebble Creek. <clears throat> And uh, she had a little fall this past week, but everything uh, went okay and didn't hurt herself uh, in too bad of a way. So we thank the Lord for his protection in the midst of that. And then Brother Jim Patterson as well, continue to lift him up. And then I'll mention Sherry uh, Jarvis. You know, Sherry's uh, been having some uh, uh, difficulties. We miss seeing her. And uh, keep her in prayer if you would, and just pray that the Lord would uh, uh, enable her to uh, get back. I know she loves being here at the church and misses that greatly. 
And so uh, do pray for that, uh, if you would, in that need. And then lastly, let me mention to you, um, again, uh, just, uh, you know, it, it's one of those days today that uh, has not been easy. Uh, I know our choir, it was hard for them, uh, difficult for our uh, uh, staff upstairs who are running the uh, sound and all the things that are going on. Uh, we lost a team member, right? And uh, Brother Dan Davis uh, went home to be with the Lord. Um, unexpected, suddenly, um, but, uh, you know, uh, God's timing is God's timing. And uh, we don't understand it, uh, but we do uh, know that uh, um, Brother Dan loved the Lord. And uh, he uh, was such a great uh, asset to this ministry. Um, I, I could never... Uh, I told Diana this the other day, I said we could never list all the things that uh, uh, Dan and Diana both uh, had their hand in, in the, in the ministry. Things in this church uh, you'd never even see that uh, Brother Dan had a part of. And so we'll miss him greatly. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're praising God that we know where he's at. And... Uh, we know that uh, God will give us what we need. And so you pray for the, the ministry, the work, and those that are, uh, you know, surrounded by all the things that uh, we uh, were uh, invested in with Brother Dan. Uh, I'm going to miss uh, the phone calls that we had. I'm um, going to miss uh, sometimes um, uh, seeing that smile up there when things weren't going right down here. He'd sit up there with that smile on his face and, you know, and I'm like, Dan, we're down here suffering. And he just kept grinning, but he'd fix it and try to get us going. And uh, so we, we miss him and uh, miss uh, his presence. And uh, again, uh, there's going to be things that uh, something's going to happen. And, um, you know, I could call Dan and say, Dan, uh, we got a noise here or we got this going on. And he's the only guy that knows 50 plus years uh, he's been doing this at our church. And so it's going to be a void. And um, so you pray, uh, pray for Diana. She is, uh, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> she's hanging in there and uh, keep her in prayer. So Wednesday, uh, we'll not have church service. We're going to have calling hours here at five o'clock to eight o'clock. So um, be praying for the family, uh, Stephen, Beth, and uh, they have a daughter, uh, uh, Tanya and Will, and also Amanda and their families. And so 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock Wednesday uh, here at the church. Thursday, they'll have a one-hour calling from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, and then uh, the uh, services will take place at 11. That'll all be right here at the church, all right? So uh, be mindful of that, and uh, do pray uh, for those things ahead, and uh, pray for God's hand to, uh, to work in the midst, okay? So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, my son-in-law, uh, Shane uh, Bates, uh, he's going to speak this morning. Thank the Lord, because my voice is just still uh, giving me a lot of problems. And um, so, yeah, I, I'm, you know, just last week I was just amazed that I got through Sunday morning. By our evening, I could hardly talk. And, and uh, Monday morning, I was just a whisper. And so it is making progress and getting better. But uh, thank the Lord, uh, Shane, he called me and he said, you know, can I help you? Or would you uh, like for me to, to speak? And I kind of hesitated and I thought, no, I'll be okay. But uh, I'm glad he's here this morning and uh, he's going to speak for us. I enjoy hearing him and uh, he does such a great uh, uh, job uh, teaching the word and preaching the word. So I'm going to pray. Janet's going to sing and Brother Shane will come and preach to us. Father, thank you again for uh, bringing us here. <coughs> Lord, we're thankful that um, God, we, we know your spirit is here. And Lord, uh, you know each uh, individual in this room. Um, God, some of us uh, or many of us are um, saddened by the news of our dear brother. Um, God, we do pray for their family. We pray that you just touch them and help them, Lord, in their time of need, which we know you will. Uh, God, to comfort all that, uh, that uh, God, uh, we will go through in these days ahead. So I do pray for that. And uh, Lord, I pray for the other needs that have been voiced on this uh, day for these prayer requests. I know there's many others, no doubt, in our congregation today that uh, have uh, special needs. And so, Lord, we just lift up each and every one of them. And, oh, God, may your spirit fall on us. 
through the message today. And uh, God encourage us and challenge us by what you have to say. And uh, we do pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
when I was singing, all right? It, so if you turn it on while I'm singing, I'm going to be up there after the service, and we're going to have words, all right? No one wants to hear that, all right? Uh, John chapter 14, if you would, very familiar passage of Scripture. In Sunday school, we've been covering uh, a series, significant phrases in the Bible. I just wanted to, while you're turning there, I wanted to point out the fact that uh, not only was Dan a tremendous asset and help to this church, he uh, helped a lot of churches, a lot of people that were otherwise couldn't maybe afford it or churches that were early on the upstart and he was one to volunteer his time, technology, attention, he and his wife, faithful servants and I couldn't help but think when I uh, heard the news that, uh, that he heard the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. In John chapter 14, there is an interesting phrase, I won't give you Sunday school lesson, I'd have to charge you for that, I accept major credit cards, 1595, I'm sorry, that's a whole thing. Um, the Sunday school lesson was uh, about Jesus' words and phrase, very simple phrase, to let not your heart be troubled, and then if you skip that next phrase and go to verse 2. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And that phrase, to his men, 11 of those individuals now going to confront the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ, uneducated, uh, lonely, isolated, reviled by the world, were going to cause the gospel to spread to the entire known world at that time. And he told those individuals to let not your heart be troubled. Also in Sunday school, we talked about what your heart was, the seat of your emotions. We talked about the implications of the Jewish nation and what he was telling them to equate himself with God the Father, that he was the Son. And when the Holy Spirit arrived on the day of Pentecost, the church would be formed and the triune God would perform a unbreakable, unstoppable mission to reach the world for Jesus Christ. We also talked about every time that the world tries to stamp out the gospel, every time they persecute the gospel, every time they try to stifle the gospel, it spreads like wildfire. It's an unbelievable dynamic. So that's what you missed in Sunday school. Come back a couple of weeks from now and we'll have something new for you, all right? That being said, we come now to this idea, in my father's house are many mansions. I've heard the saying from other versions of the Bible, in my father's house are many dwelling places or some variation of that. I've been a policeman for 23 years. I remember vividly one winter night we went to both a mansion and a dwelling place. Uh, we entered into a mansion for a domestic violence call of which the foyer of this house would have, my house would have fit in, the lobby. I could have put my entire house in this man's lobby. It didn't help him with his problems that day, but by any definition and any standard, this was a mansion. I would dare say maybe a castle. At one point, I determined that the talking voice that I heard was the toilet welcoming you into the bathroom. And I thought, how in the world do you have this much money? And they did. Uh, shortly thereafter, we went to a second domestic call that very evening, and the young man had to be persuaded uh, down the stairs, escorted, helped, and we had to take him out of his house because he wasn't listening so very, too very good. And we uh, got up to the loft of his dwelling place, and as we were helping him down the stairs, the loft started to give way and wouldn't bear the weight of our guys and him on it. And I thought, mansion, dwelling place. Which would you like? In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And he says further that he goes to prepare a place for you. This idea that he's telling you to control the seat of your emotions, to relax, to breathe, is to the believer. He's talking to the saved. He's already told the lost person Judas Iscariot, to do what it is he's going to do. In fact, he told him to go and betray him. And the men that were with him wondered, and we talked about this in Sunday school, was it I that would betray the Savior of the world? That is the power of suggestion that Satan has. Eleven of them knew they had no part in the betrayal of Jesus Christ, yet the devil came in to perfectly solid Christians and began to whisper and tell them that they could possibly be the one. 
Only the one knew exactly what he was going to do. And Jesus knew it too and said, what you do, go do. Now, this is a bleak time. Uh, Jesus is soon to die on the cross of Calvary. They are uh, persecuted, oppressed, accused of being with the Savior of the world. It would not be a number of hours later that Simon, uh, that uh, Peter would say, I don't know this man. I have no idea who you're talking about. And, and they begin to accuse him and say, you, you sound like him. Oh, you've been around him too much. And he said, no, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know him. And then he began to curse to change his pattern of speech in order to convince them that he was not part of this whole cult of the day. They were scared. They had every reason to be. They were being persecuted, their Savior being taken from them. There was a plot and a conspiracy to kill Jesus repeatedly. And this was by far, and by any standard, the most successful. They were finally going to get their man, so to speak. Unbeknownst to them, Jesus Christ willingly gave his life as a lamb to the slaughter. But may I show you this. While he acquiesced to the cross of Calvary at his Father's will, one time he will never acquiesce to man again. Ever. He comes back as the conquering, crushing king. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior, we are living in a day and an age whereby it's much like the day of Noah. If you don't know the story of Noah... Crazy old man Noah was told to build an ark in the middle of a desert in a town, in a city, in a country, in a world that had never seen rain. And he began for a hundred years to preach, it's going to flood, it's going to rain, get inside the ark. And for 100 years, the ark was open. The gangplank was down. Anyone could enter into the ark at the behest of Noah, yet no one did. At the end of the conclusion of the time of Noah's preaching, God shut the door. In his justice, in his righteousness, in his holiness, he sent judgment. Judgment is a principle reserved for the lost. There's good news today. If you're lost, you can change it in an instant. You can get inside the ark of safety, which is Jesus Christ, and be redeemed. But for this purpose, I'm talking to the saved, the redeemed, those who accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, those who are dependent on their salvation through Christ alone. You come to this idea that he tells the believer, the 11 that are left, uh, excluding the betrayer, let not your heart be troubled. Now, he did not say, as we talked in Sunday school, do not be worried. Uh, There used to be a a popular song, don't worry, be happy. No basis whatsoever for that. Now I'm dating myself. How many remember that? All right. (laughs) Half the kids in this room are like, what is this dude talking about? The idea was just be happy for no particular reason whatsoever. It just make yourself happy and happiness will follow. That is foolish. You have a lot of problems in this world today. Society is not getting better. I told our Sunday school class it was refreshing to see their smiling faces and normal people after the week that I had this week. I really appreciate you being normal for most of you. I'm speaking to most of you in this room today. Smile. God loves you. I appreciate seeing people that genuinely care, that are happy to be here, smiling faces, salt of the earth, good and normal people. But normal won't get you to heaven. Uh, Good won't get you to heaven. Morally right won't get you to heaven. Uh, Trying to do the right thing, being neighborly, being charitable. None of these are a substitute for Jesus Christ's shed blood and the belief in his resurrection. That is the only way to salvation. He tells the Christian, let not your heart be troubled. Do you know why? And the answer is very simple. Because he is in control, not us. One of the principal reasons that I really hate the the, the roller coaster world and Cedar Point, right, is loss of control. I don't like being buckled in. I don't like being shoved where I don't want to go. I don't want to ride a roller coaster because it's not fun, all right? I don't like it. My favorite ride at Cedar Point is the exit, all right? That's my favorite ride there. There's never any line for it. You can get right out every time. You walk right out the door. They don't charge you. They don't do anything. And every year I have to hear, we got to go to Cedar Point. It's so much fun. No, it's not. All right. One of the principal things that I don't like about riding those roller coasters is loss of control. Now, if you told me to drive at 108 mile an hour as fast as I could, I'd be like, let's go. Let's see how fast we can do it. All right. But I don't want to lose or or, or acquiesce control to the roller coaster operator and whoever he may be or she may be. All right. Uh, Jesus Christ said, I'm in control and you're not. Therefore, let not your heart be troubled. Now, 
if you work nights for as long as I have and you come in, you're doing reports or whatever it is, you're concluding the end of the night, you're yelling at new rookies who don't know how to write reports and you're trying to deal with things. I became a professional babysitter last year called a sergeant and you're telling these kids you have to listen, you have to do it this way, you have to pay attention and you're looking at the TV, you'll inevitably see uh, late night TV, you'll see uh, uh, the games of poker come on on ESPN 35 and uh, Sports Channel 37. It's about the only thing that it's not an infomercial, and you'll see it. And I've often thought with the games of chance or whatever they are, whatever they're advertising, they have hidden cameras not privy to the players. You with me? They will show you at the table what the individual players hold. And then up above, another camera will tell you what the player needs. And they will then give you an odd, uh, whatever it is, a percentage based on whether or not this player needs or has or wants this. I often have thought, how good would I be if I knew the percentage? Right? I mean, you'd be really good at this. If I had the camera to tell me what that guy is holding, what I have, and what I need, it would be very easy. There gets to a point in uh, watching the 37th version of this channel that they tell you that this guy cannot lose. They give a little check mark, and that's when he, you know he's in good shape. 100% cannot lose, cannot fail, save for one reason and one reason only. That the individual he's playing bluffs him, and he chooses to relinquish the, the win and give it back. That's the only way that it could happen. The check mark has sealed the fate. The game is over. In the game of chess, it's called checkmate. It is over. When Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary and rose again, it was checkmate. The Christian won. He cannot lose. He cannot lose. There is nothing that the devil can do to take a Christian salvation, the believer's salvation, away. The, the Christian has to acquiesce control back to Satan and give away the farm in order to, for him to have any victory over our lives whatsoever. Why? Because we already know what the cards say. We already know what has happened. And someone that has already been in both the presence of heaven and in earth is here to tell us, let not your heart be troubled. I've seen the other side and it's nothing but good. One of the things I think uh, is very important for family members who have lost loved ones, and certainly, unfortunately, my family has been touched by several close deaths, church family, actual family, extended family, and deaths that have affected each one of us. I believe this, much like God had to cover his glory in the Old Testament when he revealed himself to man. You remember he revealed himself to Moses in a burning bush. He talked to David through Samuel. He appeared in dreams and visions. He had to constantly veil his glory lest it kill the individual that he's talking to. I believe by the same scope in studying the Word of God that if He revealed heaven in its splendor and glory to us, every one of us in this room, to, uh, without exception, would say, let's go. Today. I, I don't want to be here anymore. Because I believe what God has planned on the other side is so much greater. And then I say this in reverent respect, you haven't seen anything yet. If you think this world is good, if you like what this world is, and God has caused our human body to want to live as long as it is, it's perfectly natural, to want to continue life. And by the way, God is the taker of life, not you. You can't decide when you end your life. God decides that. And your home in heaven, uh, through the belief in Jesus Christ and his shed blood and resurrection, is secured. You're not home yet, but I believe if he gave you a full, unredacted glance at heaven, you would choose to go every time. I believe that it is unmitigated happiness. I believe that you cannot fathom what will await for the believer. This is a, a pit stop for us, a vanishing uh, vapor of a life, so, to, so says James. He tells you the story also that there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. Not only have I seen it, I've been there. And I'm the active person preparing it for you. Now, if you believe the book of John and you believe the whole of the Bible, you know that Christ is the creator in John 1.1 1, 1 of all the world. He spoke the world into existence. In Genesis, it goes a little bit further to say, and he made the stars also. Oh, by the way, the billions of galaxies, which by the way, we, th we think aliens are still landing and stuff like that. And they're going to come out in Las Vegas and all that. And, okay. All right. Cool. He made it all. He created everything. 
And he put it in a place. And he says that he is coming to another area, heaven, the eternal, the celestial, and he's going to prepare another place. What dimmed the view of the earth? Sin. Whenever man chose to take of the fruit, to touch the fruit, he cast his lot with sin, and God judged the earth. Can you imagine the beauty prior to sin of this earth? Can you imagine what God is preparing now for the, for the redeemed? And he says, let not your heart be troubled. He also says that he would have told you if it were not true. People have a hard time with this concept. There are several things that God cannot do. God cannot lie. He's incapable of lying. He cannot do it. God cannot remember confessed sin. You remember he said that if you bring your, your sin to him in true and genuine uh, confession, that he'll remove it from the east and the west. Finish that for me. I will remember it no more. He cannot remember confessed sin. So if you bring your sin and confess to the Lord, and then you try to recall it to him, he cannot remember it. He cannot lie. He cannot remember confessed sin of the believer. He cannot remember sin that's under the blood. And he cannot fail. He cannot fail. <laughs> now, man starts with this premise that we are fundamentally good. If we just gave them more money and more time and more better ideas, and we'll do this and we'll do that, man will be better. It's inherently false. Sin brings man backward, downward. It's a negative. God cannot fail. He cannot fail. He cannot lie and he cannot fail. And he said, if there weren't mansions in heaven, I would have told you so. If you don't have a place in heaven, I would have told you that too. Even if it was bad news, I would have still told you that. So let not your heart be troubled. Because the God of heaven that cannot lie has promised us a place secure forever. I've said this many times, and you've probably heard me say this. Don't let some dummy tell you you can lose your salvation. Don't do it. Don't do it. Our home is secured by the promise of God who cannot lie. If you're here today and have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior, he promises you that this is as bad as it gets. That's it. As bad as it gets. If you're saved today, this life, on your worst day, in the, the worst situation you've ever been in, and your saddest, most grievous moment, is bad as it ever gets. And then the worst thing that could happen to you is you could die and go to heaven. It's pretty good odds. I like those. By the, by the converse, this is as good as it gets for the lost, for the unregenerate, for the unredeemed. Their best day. Their best day on earth. Everything's coming up sunshine and roses. This is their very best that they can experience. Why? Because they don't have the redeeming promise of God of eternal security and let not their heart be troubled. There was a young man, uh, there was a, uh, he was in 10th grade and he attended a, a kind of fantasy baseball camp uh, with some pro players, some pro scouts, coaches. Uh, his family scraped up the money, sent him to this camp, week or two long camp out in California. They were evaluating fielding ability, running ability, hitting ability, anything to do with baseball, strength. And they began to make marks throughout the week about this young man. They would uh, make the initial evaluation and they would move to, uh, you know, two or three days of training and trying to fix the swing, trying to, trying to bring this person up to the level of the game uh, that he would maybe one day make it. And one of the evaluators on the fifth or sixth day begins to write, he has a unconventional swing, uh, maybe not fixable, begins to talk about lax power. Uh, inexperienced, uh, swings at the wrong pitches, out of balance, and just skewers this young man, this 10th grader. He could have read that report and said that it's over. I, I, can't, I can't make this. He took that as motivation, and he left that camp. He was an all-star in high school in his junior year. He went to the senior year. He was inevitably going to be recruited by the majors and the minor leagues. That He was headed somewhere. He held on to that throughout most of his adult career. And then he, when he was drafted by the New York Yankees, uh, he, he, his, his report changed just a little bit. Uh, most people in Major League Baseball have a scouting report. It says they can't hit the inside pitch, will swing too early at off-speed stuff, whatever their deficiency is. 
But the all-star slugger, the Yankee Clipper that is Aaron Judge, batting report or scouting report reads just two words. Good luck. Good luck. Don't pitch to him. Because if you pitch to him, he will hit it out of the, out of the park. Do not pitch to this guy. Bypass him. Too powerful. He said in an interview with his wife, I was thinking about taking that to that 10th grade evaluator and saying, you sure that's right? You sure that's right? Satan is whispering to the Christian that you're a failure. You're too old. You can't do this. You're invaluable. You don't matter. You're insignificant. Your worries are too great. Your finances are too little. You cannot do anything for God. You're worthless. And some Christians choose to believe that evaluation. Much like the example of the odds, they just take him at his word, believe it and move on because they're going to self-deprecate and they're going to fall back and they're going to pull back and they're going to not do anything because after all, I'm not sure that I'm worthy. And yet, the words of Christ are completely different. He writes a completely different evaluation of you. You are significant and you are important to God. If you are breathing air today and you are saved and redeemed, you are an important cog in the wheel of the success of the kingdom of God. Now, how much success is completely dependent on you. You may find a small role, you might find a major role, but you are dependent, or the success of God's will and plan and kingdom is dependent on what you do. And so, as we look at this, he tells the Christian to stop believing the lies of the devil. Let not your heart be troubled. You have a home in heaven. It's secure. You should be comfortable with that. You should relax at that. You should understand that you can breathe comfortably at that. You can be assured that your loved ones are at peace. You can know peace. This world is doing everything they can to market and sell relaxation. Going back to the 3 a.m. info commercials, what are they selling you? A better body image, a happier life, dog toys, anything that is going to help you to be just a little bit happier. And this product, if you invest in it, will complete what it is you're looking for. Peace, happiness. They're selling it. Jesus Christ said, let not your heart be troubled. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we think of Uh, Many people dealing with many things in this room. Uh, Recent loss of loved ones, this most recent with Brother Dan. Many people just a few years ago, a few months ago, and even less than uh, five years ago have lost someone very significant in their life. A spouse, a sibling, a uh, child. Lord, they're dealing with grievous things that many people just can't even wrap their mind around. Uh, We have a Savior who tells us, that he's in control, and to not let our heart be troubled. And so I ask that you provide comfort to the people in this room, to the redeemed, to the saved, that they would be encouraged to not listen to the lies of the devil, that they would see their potential for how you evaluate them and not what others may say. Lord, may they see the worth of their life. May they be uh, furthering the kingdom of God by their life. And I I also ask uh, maybe if there's one here under the sound of our voice that has never accepted you as Savior. Lord, they may not even know what it means in its entirety, but it's a simple dependence upon you for their salvation, for their eternal destiny. I pray that they would learn today that it has to be placed in the hands of Christ alone and that you would reveal to them your truth, which is your son, as the only answer to their problems. I just ask now as you bless in this invitation, as you encourage the believer and help us, that we understand that we can rest comfortably in your sovereign will. In Christ's name, amen. If you'd stand for us, please. Just have a verse of invitation. If you have a need, you come. Ask me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me. me by let me
had a throne of mercy, find a sweet relief, kneeling there in deep contrition, help my unbelief, Savior, Savior. If you ever have a need and you can't step out, and the pastor, myself, many others will take a Bible, help you, comfort you, do anything we can to make sure we meet with you. You do not have to be embarrassed or pressed. We want you to be encouraged. We want you to understand what the Bible has to say about the security of your life. And we just want to encourage that. Also, pray for one another. Difficult time Wednesday and Thursday as the pastor outlined the services that we have to follow for Brother Dan. Uh, very faithful servant of the Lord. So we'll pray and conclude. I appreciate that you came today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask now that uh, each person here is blessed and helped. We pray that they're encouraged to uh, live a uh, life that's pleasing to you. And also, Lord, if there's one here that doesn't know you, we pray for their salvation today. And we also pray for safety as we go about our week. In Christ's name, amen.